Let's jump right into it, no BS. If your hub motor is doing something like this when you hit the throttle, if you're not getting any motor movement at all, or getting an error 10 or error 30 from your display, then this video can help you identify the problem to get you back on the road. I must say that most of the information I found from this forum post by this user, TommyCat. This info helped me fix my broken hub motor, so kudos to that guy for providing this excellent documentation. If you want even more in-depth testing procedures, please check out his post link down below. I will also throw some links to some other informative posts that help me fix my problem. Before attempting this, the very first thing you want to check for is any issues with your wiring, connectors being loose, places where there is rubbing, chafing, or pinch points, especially where the wires go into your axle. It could be something very simple. This video is for after you've already done some basic troubleshooting steps by checking your wiring before pulling anything off of your bike. If everything looks fine and you're still having an issue, then these next steps will help you dive deeper, so let's go. Let me put back my green sensor wire as I had simulated what would happen if one of your hall sensors was not working. Alternatively, you can just purchase an e-bike tester board that will allow you to do all these tests in a more convenient way. I actually bought one of these and it's on the way, so if you want me to show you how to use it in a future video, please let me know, but it's not necessary as you can do all these tests with a multimeter, as I will show you now, but you will need a multimeter. They're super cheap and useful for all kinds of other electronic things, so I suggest picking one up, if nothing else, than to help you fix your e-bike. Now, I don't want to over explain, but diagnosing this will be a lot easier if you have a fundamental understanding of how a hub motor works. There is a ring of magnets attached to your axle, the stator, that has segments of coiled wire that is energized by your controller from your battery. Then there is a separate ring of magnets affixed to your wheel, the rotor, that is affected by your magnets on the stator. Your controller sends energy through your phase wires to different sections of magnets on the stator. Once these magnets are energized, they have an effect on the magnets on your wheel, the rotor, motor, causing it to turn. But they only cause it to turn until it hits the next section of magnets. So in order to keep the rotation going, the next section of magnets needs to be energized, but the previous section of magnets now also needs to be turned off. Otherwise, they will start fighting each other for which direction to turn the motor. Looks like something familiar like in the beginning of this video. Now, how does the controller know which segments of wires, magnets, to turn on and which to turn off, and at which intervals. There must be some kind of sensor that reads magnetic signals, and that's exactly what your Hall effect sensors do. Most hub motors will have three phases or sections of magnet groups, and they will have three phase wires and also three Hall sensors. Yellow, green, and blue are the typical phase colors for these wires. Notice how there are very thick wires and also very thin wires, but they both have the same colors. That is because the thick wires are delivering the power to the coils in the motor, while the thin ones are giving sensor information back to the controller from the hall sensors and you guessed it the small yellow wire is the feedback from the hall sensor that correlates to the yellow phase wire that supplies power to the yellow section of magnets and the same goes for the other two colors there are also two other small wires the red and black these are the power wires to energize the hall sensors because they need power to operate you may also have a sixth white wire this is typically just a speedometer wire. You can do these next tests with your bike still hooked up and nothing removed. If you do not have your bike assembled and you only have your motor to test, I will show you a way to set up to do this test with only the hub motor in a section near the end of this video. The first thing we want to check is if the hall sensors are getting power. If they're not getting power, then they're going to have a tough time reporting back information that your controller needs and this would be a fault that would cause your hub motor to stop working. To test this, turn on your bike so that power is applied to your controller. We want to test with our multimeter here, so set it up to measure DC voltage in the 20 range. We're looking for roughly 5 volts going through this circuit. Place your ground lead on the small black wire and your 
positive lead on the small red wire. If you can't get access to the wires, you can back probe the connector with the multimeter leads, or you can stuff a metal wire, like a paper clip, in there to make contact, and then touch your leads to that. I've gone ahead and completely removed my wires from the connector for testing, and if you want to do that, it's pretty easy. Just use a knife or a small screwdriver to push the tab down to release the wires from the connector. On the multimeter, you should see 5 volts or roughly about that here. If you're not seeing anything, either you forgot to turn your bike on or you have an issue with your wiring or controller that is not outputting the 5 volt lines to the hall sensors. This could also be an issue with the wiring internally in the motor, so if you're not seeing any voltage here and you've checked your wires, go ahead and skip to the next step in the video where we open the motor. But if you have 5 volts on this circuit, let's move on to testing each hall sensor to make sure they are working correctly. With your bike still powered on, keep your ground lead on your black wire. Let's place the positive lead from the multimeter on the first hall sensor wire, the small yellow wire. While we have it connected, we're going to want to turn the axle, or if this is still on your bike, you can just turn your wheel. You basically want the magnets to go in and out of phase, and your meter is going to be reading this change by oscillating between 0 and 5 volts, depending on which section of magnets they are passing. So, hold your meter leads, or clamp them if you can, and slowly turn your wheel, or axle as I'm doing here as the wheel is off of my bike. You will see the meter go from 0 to 5 to 0, repeating as you turn. Now perform this test on the other two hall wires, the green and blue one. You should see the same behavior. If you are seeing a situation where either it's 0 volts regardless of the position, or if you're seeing 5 volts regardless of the position, then you know something is not right with that particular hall sensor. Test all of them and find out which one or which ones are causing a problem. Once you've identified that yes, in fact, you are having hall sensor issues, now it's time to get inside the motor. First unscrew all the bolts holding on the cover. There are two sides and typically the hall sensors will be on the side opposite of where the wires go into the axle. I'm not sure if all motors are set up this way, so you may need to end up removing both side covers. It shouldn't be too difficult to remove the covers, but some motors may have some adhesive or sealants to keep out water intrusion, so if you're having a tough time you may want to hit it with a hairdryer or heat gun for a bit to soften up that sealant. This motor doesn't have any and I used a very sharp chisel to get under the seam. I put some blue tape to try and avoid scratching the anodized finish but if you're very concerned about it then only use plastic pry tools. Work your way around until the cover is completely off. You can use a puller tool but most of the time that shouldn't be necessary. Here you can see on this side there are not hall sensors present. If that's the case for you, flip it over and remove the other side cover. There they are. Usually you'll see some kind of printed circuit board that the hall sensor is attached to. If you were having an issue with zero voltage on your hall sensor power wires, it's a good idea to do a continuity test to check to make sure there isn't an issue with the wiring to the hall circuit board. Set your meter to continuity or beep mode. This checks to make sure a circuit is complete. If it beeps, then your wiring is good. If it doesn't, then there is a break in the wire. A ton of issues can arise from where the wires go into the axle. This is a great place for wires to get pinched and break or short on each other, so this test will help you identify that. Let's first test the hall PCB for any shorts or broken traces. With your meter on continuity, first check the positive traces by holding one lead on the red positive pad, then the positive pad on each of the hall sensors. On this board, they are on the left side pin, but they may be different on your board. These boards you usually have a clear protective coating or film that you may need to scratch off or press hard enough to pierce through the conformal coating on the PCB. Make sure your leads are actually touching the PCB and not being suspended by the clear protective coating giving you a false reading. Next, let's check the ground traces by repeating those same exact steps, only this time on the ground circuit, which is the middle pins on the hall sensors. Now I'm going to check each of the hall signal traces, which corresponds to the right side pins for 
for each sensor wire, blue, yellow, and green. If you're seeing a short or no continuity, then it could be an issue with the traces on the PCB. Inspect it for any scrapes, cuts, or gouges, perhaps any burn marks. If the PCB looks okay, then it's probably an internal short on one of the hall sensors. This particular motor was not working previously, and I originally thought that it must be the hall sensors, but it turns out it actually was a short on this printed circuit board. So you'll want to check this before you go and start replacing all your sensors. Also, you don't actually need this printed circuit board, so you can bypass it by just connecting all the wires respectively. So if it's just your PCB that is toast, then I would suggest just bypassing it like some other people have. Now let's test the wiring that goes from your controller to the hall sensor PCB. Same type of test with the continuity. Check each wire to make sure there is continuity from the PCB to the end of the wire that goes out through the axle. If your PCB and wiring checks out and you did see an issue when testing the hall sensors with the 050 volt oscillation, then you can be quite certain it is the hall sensor. Now you'll also be able to tell which sensor was causing the issue because it will correspond to the wire color. Find the faulty sensor, remove it, and replace it with a new one. Most hub motors use this Honeywell sensor, the SS41F or SS41G. Sometimes the hauls can be glued in or adhered in, so some heat gun action may help them come out more easily. Desolder them from the PCB, make sure you get the orientation correct, and solder in the new one. Stuff it back in the cavity in which you remove the old one from, and you should be up and running again. If for whatever reason you don't have your battery, controller, or anything else but just your hub motor and you still want to perform these tests, I will show you how to set up a bench test. You will need a 5 volt source. For this, I'm just using an ordinary power bank for charging your phone, but you can use a USB charger, etc. Just make sure it only outputs 5 volts. You don't want to hook up 12 volts or more for this test. I made my own testing cable by chopping off the end of a USB cable and stripping back the wires. If you're using a regular USB cable with four wires, then you can disregard the white and green wires as all you need is the red and black, the power and ground. You'll also need a 10 kilo ohm resistor. I tried doing this without the resistor and it did not work correctly, so you will need to get a resistor for this test. Just attach the positive red lead from your USB cable to your red hall sensor wire. Also connect the 10 kilo ohm resistor to it. Now connect the black wire from your USB cable to the black hall sensor wire. I'm just using some black electrical tape to help keep them in place and also to avoid an accidental short. Now set up your multimeter to DC voltage 20 range and connect the black lead to the black hall wire. Now plug in your USB cable to your power source and then touch your red multimeter lead to the red phase wire. You should get 5 volts here. Now let's move on to testing the hall sensor wires. With your black lead still connected to your black hall wire, touch your red lead to the yellow hall wire and all also the resistor. And now start turning your axle or wheel. You should be getting 0, then 5 volts, then 0, repeating as you slowly turn your axle or wheel. Move on to the next hall wire and continue testing in the same manner. If you are using a power bank, be mindful that some of them will auto shut off if there is no power being drawn. So be aware that if you're not getting the oscillating readings you're expecting, make sure it's not because your power bank shut off by itself as this will give you a false reading. That's pretty much it guys. I hope this video was helpful in getting your e-bike back on the road. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.